Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to give you a brief overview of Google Slides. Some of the skills you'll learn here might be useful to you for the DCG sample assignment or for the real DCG assignment. Now these are just some suggestions. There's loads of different ways. Traditionally we might have used Publisher or some people would have used PowerPoint to create the DCG assignment but there are some merits to using slides instead. It is easy to share work and I suppose it's 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 quite useful to have it all online, cloud-based, rather than trying to store it on a memory key, maybe, if you need to do some work from different machines. So, in, in terms of access, the likes of Google Slides can be very, very handy for that. We do have to know a number of just what could be considered basic key um, tasks and methods. So, I'm, I'm just going to give a very brief overview of some of those. I also have a number of websites that I might suggest, websites and apps. And maybe you'll get something out of them and maybe you won't find them useful at all. But if you use any one, then it might be a benefit. Now the first thing I want to show you here is that I've done very little here. All I have done is just gone into my account, signed into my Google account. I hit the nine dots that usually sits over here at the right hand side. And I just hit slides. So I have a new Google slide started. Label it. Now, I just wrote down DCG sample assignment here already, so it picked up on the first bit of text that it found. DCG sample assignment. I am going to just write down. So it's, it's named. Now, uh, filing structure and folder structure is key here. If you are organized with your files, it can be so, so helpful and it can just make up the project so much less stressful than it needs to be. So keeping your folders, keeping your files, keeping your pictures, keeping your links, keeping them all organized into one place, one place that is accessible from the school PC, from our phone, from our home laptop, is really, really useful. So at that end, what I'm going to do here is move it. I'm going to go into DCG, and I'm going to go into my fifth year sample assignment, which I have already set up. Now I've set up photos, and I've just my generic space here. So I'm going to move it into that general area it's going to be visible to everyone that can see fifth year sample assignment now for you the only people that will be able to see fifth year sample assignment might be just yourself and maybe you'll share with your teacher that's all that so we'll move that now everything i do on this sample assignment will automatically save and will be put into that same file location As you work through and any change you made, any change you make, you can roll back on the changes and see previous versions if you're not happy with changes. Um, it will also back up and also save, which is very, very useful as well. So, first thing I'll do here is I'll just insert a new slide. And I might have just in a couple of spare ones there, or Control M, the shortcut. And just keep an eye out for these shortcuts because there's often shortcuts dropped up here beside the, the actual command. I'm going to leave this out here at the front. I'm going to go on to page two. Now, it's given me themes that I could work from. And these would be A lot of these are more suited to presentations than they are to project work like we're doing. So I'll just close that tab and I have a bit more work. The first process I'll do on this page is I'll just highlight the two text boxes that are there and hit delete. Next, I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go all the way down here to the end to Page Setup. So, we don't want widescreen 16.9, or whatever comes up as standard is probably going to be no good to us. We want to go Custom Setup. We will be printing this off as A3, so in centimetres, that is 42 centimetres wide, 29.7 centimetres Sometimes it happens where I put them in the wrong way and it ends up being portrait. We want a landscape, a tree page. Now, the next thing is, if we want to start actually populating this. So, um, I'll just go here to insert and I'll put in a text box. Just draw a basic text box there and just call this fifth year. Fifth year DCG sample assignment. While the cursor is moving there, I'll hit Control A to highlight all text. 
I can increase the size of the text. I can make a bold italic or underline. I can change the text color. And I can change the type of font. Anything I want. So there's just a number of different things. I can rotate the angle of the text. And I don't know if there's much more that we need. If you wait until you get your four arrows, you can move that text box. And you have full freedom. Unlike using Google Docs, where moving one thing puts everything else out, when you move something on Google Slides, it either goes in front or behind another object and it doesn't throw it out of position. Next thing I'll just drop in there. And this is only a little mess around I'm having here. I'm not saying that this is how you'd structure your assignment or sample assignment. This is just showing you a few of the tools that are kind of handy. And just pick a shape, drop it in. And the next thing is I'll pick a fill color and I can change the fill color of this shape there to yellow. And I can change the line color or the outline to blue. And I can change the weight to something heavier or the type to dashed. So there's just some of your options for formatting that exact object there that we put in. And then we can make it into a text box by clicking that. So sorry, actually, my mistake. Add text here is just a double click. Quick double click and it starts, it makes whatever shape you put in into a text box. So if I just say that the pro project is all about computer mice, I'm going to control A again. And to go up, 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 18. And I'll go this time, different one again. Not happy with that, up again. Any text that you put into a text box, when you go control A, you have got the, uh, where is it here? You can align it left, centered, right, or you can justify. Now, if you're putting in a full paragraph of text, justify looks great, I think. Uh, maybe you'd prefer centered, maybe you prefer left tab only, but justifying text looks quite good. What it does is it leaves no half filled lines. It's just Spaces out the text such that every line is full left and full right. So it's aligned left and right. Can look really good on these projects. If you need to make up some extra space, you can change your um, line spacing there to single line 1.5 or 1.15 is usually standard. If you want to really expand on a point and have it easy to read, maybe 1.5 or double line spacing looks good, but that's another little option for you. If I wanted to put in callouts, so I had something really important here in the center of my page. And I actually also forgot to do one more thing. Um, there is an option here for the alignment of the text. But I I'll just usually just look along here and we'll kind of find everything we need to find up to the top, into the center, or down to the bottom. Top, top of box, center of box, bottom of box. Um, right, I'm going to go insert. Sorry, shapes are just here actually. I'm going to go callouts. And you can start adding as many as you want. So this is just another little tool you can use. And just, then we'll double click inside. And um, you can start adding whatever it is you feel like adding. You want to zoom in and see closer? You can just control alt and plus. So control alt plus. And that brings you in. Or you can do it manually from here. I can insert more cutouts, or I can go straight to shapes, cutouts, or I can copy the one I have by control holding the control key and dragging, and then just move the end of the cutout. So go control. I'll just uh, do it again. Control Alt minus to zoom out. Control Alt minus, and we're back out the full page. So I'm just going to delete this first page here. So I'll right click and delete that slide because I want this to be my home slide. And this is, let's say, output one page one here, maybe, or maybe you'll have left a space for a cover sheet at the front, which might be no harm at all. But this might be output one page one, and. You will lay it out any way you see fit. This is just me messing about with it. 
we really don't want to see um, keywords in the middle of the page and all these callouts coming from it. It's actually a very, it's not a very effective way of laying out a project at all. That's just me messing about and showing you some different commands. Right, something else to show. There's, there's just so much you can do here in it. This is going to be a very quick overview. If you have pictures saved, you can just insert images. You can upload them or you can bring them in from Drive. You can obviously you can mess around with this yourself and see all of the extras that you can also put in here. But just um, a little thing I was looking at there. So if I was putting in the pictures here and I wanted well, one huge background and it was to reflect the theme that I was going to work with. And there, I just went camo background. Now you, not every picture is made the same. I just pick this first one here and just click it once. And hover over the picture, I'll see 4000 by 1900. That's pixels. That just denotes the quality. That's the measure of the quality of an image. So 4000 pixels along the width, 1900 pixels along the height. I'm going to just take that image, right click, copy, and go back in here, and I will right click and paste. Now, there's that image just dropped in. On my next sheet, I'm going to go back into my camo backgrounds again, my just general Google search. I'm going to take this one and hover over it, 390 by 280. Right click, copy, and back in, and I'm going to right click and paste. Now, here's what I, what I want to show you. There's a huge difference between the two pictures. I'd like to go, go Control Alt Plus to zoom in. I'm going to double click quickly, which allows me to crop a portion off that one. I'm going to go Control Alt minus to zoom out. I'm going to fill the full page with a with a picture here. Now I understand that proportionally it doesn't quite fit the page, so what would I do? I keep stretching it. I get it to size, I just move it up with the arrow key here on my keyboard, double click, and crop it in, in line with the edge of the page again. And then back down. The arrows on the keyboard are a great way to move objects around in a very controlled manner. Now, as you can probably see, it's quite cloudy and it just doesn't look good there. That was 390 by 290 as far as I remember on the pixel value. If I take this first image here, which was a 4,000 pixel. It's crystal clear, even when blown up. Now, we try not to stretch images. We definitely try not to distort them. Like this. But even when it is pulled and distorted like that, the quality of the image is so much better than the second one. And that's down to the pixel value. Now, I would not suggest that you do that for every single image that you even tiny little extra images dotted here and there they do not have to be all high pixel value because if they are it's just making your file way too large way too heavy and whenever you try to save it as a pdf share it or print it it's going to take forever and it's going to really slow things down so don't always look for the high pixel pictures but if it's something larger something more important definitely go for those higher pixels um i'm guessing that there's probably loads of ways to like stick these in as backgrounds, but just one little thing here is if I take that picture, um, I can do my format options, which I'll just go through in a while, but I just, I'd like if everything else was outside at the front and if that picture was at the back. Now, without dragging all these off screen and then putting this on and then trying to put the other ones on so that they're in the correct order, I can just click on it, arrange, order, and bring, uh, sorry, send backward. I can just keep doing that, arrange, order, and send back, send to back, control shift, and I, uh, sorry, control shift and down, or control down will send back by one step. So I'm going to go control down, and every time I do that, if I click this guy, every time I hit control down, control down, it'll send it back one extra step. Um, if I double click as well and go format options, I can format my picture here, size and rotation. And that can be really handy 
if you want to make sure now mine's set in inches and I'd have to go back and check if I can if I can change the settings and slides here. Um I'd prefer if it was all in millimeters of course, but if I had a little picture put in there and I'm wondering okay what size is that picture? Will it look good? I don't need to go wasting paper and print printing every time. Just double click and check the size. You can change positions, you can recolor, make adjustments. In the adjustments we can up the transparency level of an image, which might be handy to you. You can put a shadow under or a reflection. No good for backgrounds, but certainly could be useful for images that are within within the project. Close my format options now. Next is I have just Googled earphones over here. I'm going to go with the very first result. I'm going to just take that image, right click, copy, and I'll go back in here and I'll just go Control V to paste. This image, if I wanted to use it for whatever reason, the white background is a problem. And there's probably loads of ways, and maybe there's an even easier way that I'm not sure of, but on Publisher it's very easy to remove background. It does it, it kind of does it for you really. There's just a two, two or three clicks and it's done. So the way I've kind of come up with this, right? First off, I like to save the pictures and have them. So when I go back into my earphones here, I'm going to just right click on that and I'm going to save uh, image as, and it's going to save here. I've already just pointed it towards this PC on my desktop and sample fifth year DCG assignment. And I call that earphones one. I like to save and keep a backup, keep a copy of all of the work I'm doing. So I'll save that. Let's drop down there now. And once I have my earphones done, what I'll also do here is this. On my slides, my last slide, and I call it bibliography. In the bibliography, you're going to put a list of references. When you take work from someone else and you use their work, you need to just give them credit for it. That's called referencing. And we don't need to worry too much about it. We need to just make a good effort at referencing our work. So that's what I'm going to do now. My good effort is this. It comes from Curry's PC World. I'll just click in. Once it opens, I'll take that link, Control C to copy, and back in here. And in my bibliography, my first one here is Control V, and it's pasted in. That text size is way too big. These references, I'm going to have loads of them. Go right down maybe to 14 or even 12. I could add them as a bullet pointed list as well if I want it. That is all we need for a bibliography. You have got the option of, if you're going to take 10 things from the Curry's website, putting the Curry's website link and putting all 10 images underneath it, and putting the Argus link and putting all 10 images under it. That is an option as well, but this is a very easy way to do it. So keep that bibliography there, and as you're using images, just grab the link, paste it in. Back to the initial problem. This image here, with the white background, is not really that useful to me. It doesn't look good. It looks terrible, actually, because it's covering the background of the image. I'm going to just bring back the format and the adjustments and turn back on that transparency all the way. And if I want to get rid of this background here so that I can just see the two earbuds floating over this background, well, I need to just remove the background. Or, what might be an option as well for me, is to Google instead earphones PNG. A PNG file, when it comes up with this kind of a checkered background, if you find the picture you want, but the background is already removed for you, which is quite handy. So if I take that one instead, I always wait for an image to load. What I mean by that is the very second I click, it's still loading and just it might just take a few seconds depending on your connection speed. Save image as. Now I can save. Or I could have just right click, copy, and over here someplace, right click. Uh, oh, still came in. PNG files shouldn't do that. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to remove the backgrounds and these guys here. 
I'll have to look into that one again. I'll show you how to remove the backgrounds. Get rid of that guy. That was a bit of a fail. How to remove the background of this guy? Well, I use a website called Remove BG. Remove BG, and we can just upload an image, or you can drag and drop the file. So if I hit upload image, I'll put earphones one. Open them and it just does it for me and it doesn't take long at all and when it's ready you know I'll just hit download and there I have it so it actually saves it as a PNG file which should have worked for me at the start but there it is I went with normal quality instead of high HD right click copy you can save that as well separately if you want to I just copied and then right click paste and then we have our image you can just see it over the second one comes in there with a clear background now look the odd time you can run into problems here um you might have to use a different website or try a different app but that is how you remove the background from the images there and just turn this background i don't like them camo backgrounds just dropped in there for the sake of it uh i'm gonna adjust and just turn the transparency right up so you can see you can see the earphones in there now if I wanted to make copies for any particular reason, hold con control, hold the control key and just drag and drop extras anywhere you want. Or if I wanted to flip an image, you can go through and out the other side and it flips the direction of the image. So yes, if you did need a symmetrical image, there you have it now. Just delete that one. So now at this stage I've gone through bibliography, which is for sample I'm doing it's added here to the end you could do it as a separate Google Doc if you wanted to but it's good to keep it all together and we won't forget about it then I've gone through formatting to the A3 size which is really important here using file and where is it page setup um, I've shown you how to put in text boxes change border change fill colors change our text type and size I've shown you how to put in shapes and keep an order in the shapes so look inserting shapes just there and if you're putting in anything at all from now on you know what to do the yellow gives you options of changing whatever particular part can be changed in these objects here and obviously you also know now about arranging things in order sending them backwards bringing them front bring them forwards and that would be useful if you have that and you need to send it backwards so that it go and you might have to keep sending backwards with something so that it goes behind uh, a particular object um, I've shown you about the larger background images and pixel size and stretching images just be very careful if you do grab an image to bring it in don't stretch them don't pixelate them by stretching them and changing the proportions of the original because it looks terrible and you will lose marks um, there's a, there's an app there of course as well or a website called remove BG so that might be useful to you for copying and flipping images I've just shown you that as well so that should be a lot of the basics a lot of the basics anyway basic use of the program <coughs> and you might find that all quite useful for the project you might have picked something up there now just some extras the first extra little part I want to show you is this wordart.com you hit create now it brings you through to a generator here where you can put in the word you can decide which particular size you want colors angles font now i wouldn't go too um too uh into this just keep it very much on the surface put in a bunch of words that are to do with whatever theme or project you are dealing with and I've already done this. I've input a lot of words here, and these are just to do with a set of headphones. There's my words. Next, I want to work with shapes. So I'm just working with the five or six, one, two, three, four, five different headings that I have. Now I went because it's to do with headphones, I just went to music. Didn't have to. I could use anything I want, or I can add my own image. So you can Google an image of anything you want and use it to structure all of your keywords. 
by adding image there. And I'll show you in another place you can find a lot of really cool images as well. But I just went to music, I went to that guy there. You can change font type if you want. You can go for that font type, you can go for a layout. I went for random and you can go for a style and I'll go custom. Actually, you know what? I'll just see what happens. And I'll hit visualize and it could take just a little while to generate. And it takes this wordart.com and it, this is only one of a number of different um, apps, I suppose you could say, or websites for doing something like this. And you can just keep changing it up and seeing what you're happy with and mess around with it. If you see something you like, then it might be very useful to you. Or maybe you, you won't like using this, but this is a nice way. Now, I'm not sure how good this particular one is. The particular shape I've used here doesn't really lend itself well to this because so many of the keywords are gone too small. But mess around with that. Very nice way of doing a bit of primary research, some nice work by yourself getting all of your keywords onto a graphic and when you're ready then you can I think you can just download the image yeah you can just download the image now a lot of these uh, uh, websites or apps that I'm showing you you might have to sign up for a free account with them as well possibly the next one I'm going to show you so that's that one we can take that image and download it and drop it in I'm going to do it I'm going to do it the wrong completely wrong way by using the snipping tool just to show you when this actually goes in onto the project. Obviously we'd be going ahead and just removing the background. As far as I know, when you download it from the website correctly, the background is already removed and it just comes in as the keywords area only. The next one I want to show you is this, this one here, the noun project. Now, you can search for icons or photos. And let's just say again, if you said audio for the keyword audio and it brings up 25,834 different icons and you have access to those they might be nice little associated extra extras that you can drop in beside a heading if I can wait if I'm talking about the weight of an object maybe I'll just use this little graphic here Again, you might have to sign up here for an account and if you want to get the icon you might have to just log in and join them but really handy website for all these little extra graphics what you can also do is use one of these graphics and put it into the word.com and use this graphic for example as the basis for your word art next one i'm going to show you is pictoch art i'll very quickly go past this this is a really nice way to, sh to create infographics. Now I suppose they'd be probably a little bit more suited towards, towards presentations and posters than they would towards a project, but you might, someone might find it useful to have a free account here again and create some infographics. There's a couple of apps then, and the first one is Snapseed, and uh, it's just a word. Snapseed is just basically for basic photo editing. You might find that useful. And this next one then, is sketch camera apps so there's lots and lots of different ones sketch camera app there's lots of free apps you can get for your phone and basically it turns any picture into a sketch of a different format and it gives us a great idea of maybe color and shade and what should we should be shading and how it's just a nice way maybe to take nerves away from that earlier stages of shading in pictures or shading in our sketches Oh, so I'm ready, almost ready to sum this one up now. What I would like to do here is just put in a couple of new slides. And if this is your fifth year sample project, well, what are going to be looking at now? I'm going to take my sample sheets here and drop them right. I was just messing about with, so you can ignore them. This will be output one, page one on design research. One, page two compare and contrast of two products. You might have one page here where you'll just get progress pictures. Just one progress picture of your freehand sketch and maybe and drop it up there. And if you have maybe two pages to do of a concept design, 
that'll be our output five page one and output five page two and at the end of it all we have a bibliography and fifth year that's not going to be a big deal i just want you to be familiar with it and aware of it in sixth year it's obviously a much big, more important thing that's a very very brief overview of google slides i'm quite mindful of not keeping everyone here too long with this and keeping everyone engaged so i think i'll just breeze through a lot of the basics showing you some nice ways to do formatting showing you a couple of very useful websites there don't forget your referencing a really important thing because a lot of people might forget about it once they get busy it's best to look at the project work i hope some of the hints and tips have been of use to you keep yourself organized and it makes everything so much easier keep everything on google slides for this project and in your google accounts on, on google drive and set up a folder just for your fifth year dcg and then in that you're going to have a subfolder for your dcg sample assignment thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video and hope you got something from it